Say hello. Say hello to the people, George. I don't know. Say hello. This is George. He's doing well. Without uh, most of you know, he's been following my channel for a while. He lost his eye uh, around about this time last year. Lost one of his eyes, didn't you, mate? But he's doing really well, and he needs a groom. And he's just jumped up on my lap as I'm about to do a video, don't you? Because he knows that I'm going to be going down to the beach this afternoon to take some photographs. But I can't take George with me. Not this time, mate, because you'd just be a pain, wouldn't you, down there, eh? <laughs> Go on, bugger off. So, hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. George is gone. Um, yeah, as you gathered, I'm going to be going down the beach this afternoon to take some photographs on my Zeiss Icon Netar medium format 6x6 camera. I love using this, as most of you know, you've been following me for a while. And I'm going to be taking a roll of Cat Labs film as well, so I'll get 12 shots down the beach. Uh, hopefully come back with some corkers, that's what I'm hoping for. With seascape photography, I used to do a lot of it before I shot film on digital. I was always going down the beach and living in an area where we've got so many beaches, I'm quite lucky. Um, unfortunately, I don't realise how lucky I am sometimes when I read some comments that come back through on YouTube um, from people when I have done seascape photography in the past. And they say how lucky I am to live near a beach. They wish they lived near a beach. And I got one recently from a subscriber who've got their own YouTube channel. Uh, the Analog Corner, I'll put a link in the description, check out their YouTube channel, uh, she's a lovely lady, and uh, she says, the locations are stunning, I live in the mountains, uh, and to be able to photograph the sea is always so difficult, I think what she means is, she doesn't live near the sea, and maybe she wished that she did, so really I should count myself lucky and start doing some more seascapes, it's the same old scenario, whenever you live in an area, you know, you might live in a city, um, you, you might live around some beautiful countryside, but they always seem, once you've shot it for years on end, they always seem a little bit boring and you're looking for something else to photograph. So I haven't been down the beach as much as I should have been possibly lately. So I'm going to start doing a series of seascapes. And like I said, I've done seascapes before in the past. I got right into it and I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot about comp uh, composing seascapes and it was digital seascapes as well. And some of them I've still got from, they're all mounted as well. That I've done in the past. These are digital shots, colour. Haven't got into colour photography for film yet. Uh, these are some of the seascapes that I've done in the past on digital. And then I got a bit more adventurous and started to do seascapes on black and white film. These are all cellophaned up. I'm not selling these guys, I'm not tearing for sale. I've actually cellophaned these up years ago uh, to protect them. Those ones you just saw were went, meant to go in frames around my home, but I didn't get around to doing it. But um, yeah, all these film seascapes that I've done in the past, you know, and then you just get a little bit bored of your own location. So this afternoon, it's not right at the moment. It's a beautiful day outside, but it's way too sunny down there. So uh, I'm gonna pack up my stuff, get down to the beach, show you guys uh, one of my local beaches, and hopefully come back with some really nice photographs on the Zeiss Icon get in the dark room as normal, and I'm not intending to have any pain in the ass um, negatives to print. I'm hopefully gonna come back with some nice negs that won't take me uh, nowhere near as long as the last video, when we were pre-flashing and stuff, to make some nice prints out of. And if they come out all right, I might stick one on eBay for you guys to auction up. Heck it, I might even stick the negative in as well. So uh, let's pack up, I'll get down the beach. It's half past two at the moment, so I'm gonna wait for another probably another hour or so just for the light to go down a bit more where I'm going the, the sunset doesn't set in front of me it sets behind me which will be uh, quite nice because I won't get those uh, highlights of the sun going down if it was color photography it might look quite nice but um, I could go to the other side of the island where I live if I wanted to get the sunset because the sun sets in front of us over the sea but uh, where I'm going, it doesn't do that. But uh, I'll pack up anyway, and we'll get down the beach. I'll show you some of the sea and get some photographs. So I'm down the beach now, and it's nearly four o'clock. I'm going to be walking right over there. In the background there you can see those cliffs. The sun's quite bright still, but by the time I get over there, it will have gone down a little bit lower. 
and uh, more manageable for my photography. I haven't even got a light meter. In fact, I don't have a light meter. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be using my phone app, so I hope it comes out all right. I must invest in a, a good light meter, actually. I've always got barbecue meters on my phone, uh, on my, well, on my phone, and also the meters inside my camera, or cameras, I should say. But, um, yeah, so I'm gonna be metering up using my phone, and uh, dog shit on the floor, and the sand driver. So, looks like the beach is nowhere near as populated as I thought it might be, which is good. So uh, anyway, I'm going to carry on walking, I'll turn the camera on when I plot up over near the cliffs. So that was a fun walk. I'm now down here at the rocks and uh, I don't hold much hope out for it really. The sun's going down. I better get on with this photograph because you can see the light is, the sunlight's over there and it's just starting to light these rocks up. But they're, they're dark rocks, you know. I don't think they're going to make a great black and white photograph. But I'm going to shoot the shit out of it anyway and see what happens. Um, I'm wet so I might as well carry on. Let's do it. So I'm on shot number nine and I'm starting to get a bit bored now because everything looks the same to me. So when that happens, I just change composition. I'll get the camera down low and get some really low shots. I'm gonna start walking back and getting some shots uh, looking back that way. The sun's gone really low now, so I don't know, see what happens. We're going to get the sun in the shot, but it'll be interesting to see. I'm going to walk back now. So, so it's now half past nine at night and I've been here in a dark room for just over an hour playing around. I thought I'd just get on with trying to make some prints uh, rather than run the video camera telling you guys what I was up to. But I'll show you uh, one of the prints that I've done in a moment. The negatives, they came out all right, but there was uh, some problems with the actual... <laughs> With the actual base of the negative itself there was like pit holes in it sort of you could feel it. it's like a, a rough edge right through the through the middle of the first probably the first six frames so i was a little bit gutted because i spent uh, quite a bit of time this afternoon trying to get some decent photographs and i haven't got a clue how these little pit holes have got onto the negative it certainly wasn't me bad handling the negs in any way i've never seen it before um interesting maybe one of you guys can uh, maybe let us know if you've ever seen this before but uh, yeah right through the middle of the negs there's like these little tiny pit holes um, and it's obviously come out uh, on the prints as well so i was a little bit upset about not upset it's only a photograph for god's sake but you know a little bit disappointed about it but hey oh is what it is just crack on didn't you so uh, i've done a, um, a contact sheet as well and the negatives seem to be a little bit overexposed <laughs> get myself a light meter. I must get a light meter because I can't keep going on with this, this uh, phone app. I need to get a light meter and get, and get my exposures right um, with these cameras that haven't got light meters in them. So uh, that's the next step for me. But however, um, a little bit of jiggery poker in a dark room with some contrast filters. I've managed to start getting some nice prints. 
So uh, I'm just working on one at the moment, and that's this one here. You can see I've been playing around with some test strips and trying to do a little bit of split grade filtering. I've decided in the end just to go for contrast five, no other filters, just contrast five, try and pull some contrast out of it, and a little tiny bit of dodging as well around the C area just to make that um, pop a little bit and shine a little bit more if you like. So uh, that's what I've been up to. I'm gonna make a, a, another print of that now, and I'll just show you how I made that print. So this is the print here. I'm using Ilford's Warm Tone uh, multi-grade paper and warm tone developer as well so this is one of the prints that i really like one of the photographs that i really liked so i started to make a print on it um, it's just a great uh, contrast five filter no other filters at all for 15 seconds uh, it is overexposed but the contrast five managed to make it pop um, and bring out the detail and i had to just do a little tiny bit of dodging around this area with this tool here it's still not how i want it to be i just want it to be shine a little bit more this wall if i can get a bit more brightness out of it that'll be quite nice i did that for about five seconds so i have to go a little bit longer on that let's get on with that i'll show you how i get on unfortunately you can just see i don't think you see it here but here's those pit holes just fading on the uh on the negative on this neg i think this is about the sixth fifth or sixth one in so you can see this is the contrast five filter that i'm using these are the filter kits I bought these recently. I was using the ones under the in the tray, but um, I went for these ones under the lens. They were quite cheap, about 25 quid, I think I paid for these on eBay. And they're protected in this little case and they're brilliant condition. So as long as I look after them, they'll last a long time. Okay, just checking, I'm still in focus. I don't know if you can see the, you probably can't actually, if I turn this light out, maybe you can. You can just about see the image projected. Um, I've got the five gray filter in there and I'm at F8 on my aperture as well. So I'm just gonna make a, a print of this now. 15 seconds with the gray five. I'm just gonna turn, no, I'll leave that light off actually. I think you can see, probably see it better like that. So let's put a bit of this Ilford multi-grade paper in. And this cardboard template I've made here is uh, eight by eight inch because I've got a six by six neg, so it's a square neg. So I've made this eight by eight. They're just weighting it down so no light seeps underneath. Dodge tool at the ready. Uh, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Let the rest of that work. So that probably create a slight vignette around the edges. Now the five's burning into um, all the rest of the image. Okay, that's pretty much done. That's all there is to it. Let's get developed. <clears throat> last thing to do is just make my border around the edge so I'll take the negative out take the contrast filter out and just burst white light using this piece of card I'm just covering the edges of the uh, about a millimeter gap all the way around uh, just burst white light onto it. You probably can't see, but the change the camera around for you. So I hope you guys can see that. That's all I need. One there, one on the left side, one on the bottom. And one on the right hand side. It's just going to give me a little black ball to finish the print off nicely. So when it's framed, just finishes it off right let's develop it and she goes you just see the border coming out now and there's that vignette and I was talking about at the bottom that's come out first and I'll just let that go for about another 45 seconds and get it stopped and fixed.
So this is a final print that I'm washing now, one of the um, longer exposures. This was the 11th photograph that I took. Uh, that's being washed. The other two, I did two more prints, they're drying at the moment, as well as all the test prints that I've done. I've been banging around here for about two hours, um, mucking around, but uh, quite a bit of that time was probably talking to you guys. But uh, I'm going to tidy up in the dark room now. I'll try and get a macro lens on, on the negative so I can show you guys um, the shit that was going on with those negs. I haven't got a clue what happened on the first six frames. Like I said, Certainly wasn't me. I don't know what, what the hell went on. But uh, I'm going to tidy up the dark room and tomorrow morning I'll finish off this video, show you the legs, show you the dry prints um, that I've made tonight on that warm tone paper. Good night. So that was the calm before the storm. I'm certainly glad I went out and did my uh, research on when that storm Kiara was going to come in and it came in this morning and you could see I was down the beach with my mate Gaz and my daughter Jess and we just went down there to watch the waves and uh, shoot some photographs and I shot that on those scans you saw I shot them on the Margo 320. I pushed it to 800 because I wanted to get a little bit of a faster shutter speed to try and capture some of those waves and lean over here. I scanned them on this Kenro scanner that I got recently. Uh, you know, scans to me aren't that important. I don't digitize scans for printing. I do all my printing in the darkroom. So the only reason I would do um, digitize my negs is to show you guys on the video as I just did then. So um, yeah, I scan those negatives, but let's get back to what I was doing the day before with the um, Zeiss Icon and that roll of CatLab's film. What went wrong? Well, this is the uh, one of the negatives here with the perforations in. And the only way I could uh, figure out what was what was going on with it is I looked at the backing roll as well, which I got, and right from the start here, right at the start, as I pulled the film out, you've got perforations there, there, one, two, three, four, five, six, it just keeps going on and on and on, and just gradually uh, fades out as, as the roll goes on over to about, um, frame five or six it starts fading out but you know there's nothing wrong with the Zeiss I've looked inside the, the Zeiss icon I've, put, I've laid the negatives back inside the Zeiss to see if there's anything inside the Zeiss that has caused it nothing at all um, I looked on the actual let's bring that back we I looked on the actual spool as well uh, now this is the original spool that come with the uh, cat labs film and that's not got any problems whatsoever. So I really can't figure out how those perforations ended up getting on the film. Um, you know, lucky enough, it's just a hobby fun that I'm doing. But, you know, nevertheless, I came away with some nice uh, prints at the end of the negatives, kind of like frame seven onwards. And I'll show you those now. And I did these on, I ended up using Contrast 5. Granted, I overexposed the images. Um, but I ended up doing these on Contrast 5 uh, filter. That's one of them there. I'll, show, I'll, I'll take a snapshot and show you these on the screen. This is more of a long exposure one that I did. And I started to do a bit more burning on that picture. Uh, one of the better ones was just looking out towards the sea. Again, this was an overexposed. All I did, I think it was about 30 seconds with Contrast 5. 
and uh, I did a little tiny bit of dodging at the bottom um, and a little bit, bit of burning in at the top but I managed to come away with some nice prints you know at the end of the day anyway and shooting as ISO icon there isn't any light meter at all inside you've got to have uh, your own external light meter and I was using the phone app so you know just goes to show that I need to get a, a decent light meter uh, to continue using cameras like that this camera is pretty cool it's this uh, Chinon C5 and this is what I did the storm photographs on it's got its own light meter inside it's very, very reliable and I just bang those out using the light meter inside and they come out nicely exposed so I was quite happy with that and I'm also going to be making a video on this pocket this soldier pocket camera this old Kodak camera here uh, kindly sent to me by Jason Hunter, he's a friend of mine, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be making a video on this pocket soldier camera that's 1913, I think the date of this is, and I managed to get hold of some film from Nick and Trick Photography, it's a Rara Pan 400, so I'm going to be loading that into this camera and giving this a whirl and see how this performs, that'll be a future video uh, coming up at some point, but anyway guys, I hope you liked the video on the seascapes, let us know if you want to see me do any more seascapes, or if you want to, want to see any more of our beaches where I live, um, I'll be happy to make a few more videos on that, quite enjoy seascapes, and I suppose like I said at the start, you can get bored with what's around you, you know, where you live, you can easily get bored of what's around you, keep shooting all the time, um, but you know, sometimes <laughs> it's nice to get out and uh, just shoot your camera, you know, and just make some photographs. And that's what I did here with the seascapes. Got back down there, and I quite enjoyed it. And I certainly enjoyed today as well, getting soaking wet uh, in Storm Cara down at the beaches uh, again today. So uh, anyway, I hope you liked the video. Uh, give it a massive thumbs up, subscribe and all that stuff. And I'll catch you next time.